Hey everybody, welcome back to On Deck, the PC gaming podcast that heavily focuses on the Steam Deck. I'm Bill, that's Lloyd. Lloyd, how are you doing this morning? Doing fantastic, Bill. Uh, doing fantastic. Little, <laughs> little tired. We talked about this. Well, I'm a little tired because we talked about this four times, but uh, no, just joking. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic week, a lot of gaming, and I am so excited to talk about the Steam Deck today. Yeah, I didn't have much gaming uh, time this week. We just got back from out of town. Uh, we went to like uh, an amusement park, and my daughter went to a concert, and I was babysitting my grandson. Uh, and uh, the kids were riding rides. I don't ride rides because I get super motion sick. Except they did talk me into going on one roller coaster, and it was I was down after that. It was bad. So. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I, this is why we're recording it a second time, because I forgot to hit record the first time, and we got about five minutes in before we realized it. But uh, hey, that's what happens. Before we get started on the show, there's three things that I want to do. First, I want to say thank you to our members uh, for supporting the show. I want to say thank you to the people who've been sending in the codes that we've been giving away in the community Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, nerdnest.tv slash Discord. Get in there, thousands of people to play or play games with and chat with, and maybe you get a free game as well. Uh, and I want to say happy anniversary to my wife. We've been married for 17 years at this point. Right now, she's probably watching this at two times speed. And uh, one of the things that we did is when we were at the amusement park, we got this little caricature drawn of us. And so I, think, I think they nailed it. Uh, this guy was awesome. And we had so much fun this week, but none of that fun involved video games for me. But that's okay. I, I, I often say I, I talk more about video games than I actually play them. Right, uh, but right, that, right. <laughs> that's okay. All right, Lloyd, are you ready to start the show? Yeah, actually, before we get started, if yeah. I could take a couple minutes I just or a couple seconds, I just want to say thanks to everybody from last week. Um, the outpouring of support and positive messages uh, just... Uh, yeah, hit me, hit me hard. So uh, I just want to say I appreciate everybody that took their time to comment and uh, and and uh, and say they're sad, uh, but they understand, and that's exactly the same way that I feel. So I uh, just wanted to thank the community out there. It's been uh, it's been fantastic talking about games uh, here for four years and everywhere else for like thirteen other years. On top of that. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody for, uh, for dropping their comments in the feed. Uh, one, one, one thing kept popping up. They're like, how do we find you if we don't use Twitter? Because I said that would be the best place to find me. Mm. Uh, if, if you want to see the odd stream, maybe in, uh, after a couple months after I, uh, fully decompress from all this stuff, um, check out youtube.com slash dasme, uh, D A S M E. That's my YouTube channel that I'm using now. So there may be some streams there every once in a while. If you want to find me and you don't use uh, Twitter, that would probably be the best what place to go. Uh, nothing there right now because I'm not streaming, but, uh, in the future, I, I think, I think I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss talking in a microphone with a camera in my face. That's a weird thing. It says weird things about me, I guess that I'm missing <laughs> that. Um, but, uh, or that I will miss that. Uh, but if that ever happens, that'll be the place where you'll be able to find it. And of course, uh, you can hang out on the Discord as well because I'm not uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying around there. Awesome. All right, uh, let's get started. By the, before we actually get to the first topic, I want to say topics can be submitted by heading on over to nerdnest.tv/submit. Uh, nerdnest.tv/submit. Maybe we will bring your topic on the show. I shared this uh, on the community Discord, and I had a bunch of people send in topics already. Uh, obviously can't put them all on as soon as they come in, but we're going to get through as, as many as we can uh, on, on today. Uh, the first one comes in from Ethan Valentine. Uh, they sent in, in regards to the trackpad discussion, uh, I'm sorry, trackpad conversation, I have thought that if they make a Steam Controller version 2, it would have much smaller trackpads like on the Index Controller. Because I'm sure I'm not alone here, but my Steam controller has been used so much that the texture on the trackpad is gone at the center and most of the left side of the pad. But there's clearly a chunk on the outermost edge that never slash rarely gets used. Ethan, thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, what I will say is... Like, Lloyd and I, we, we talked about this earlier. Neither of us have any experience with the 
uh, valve index. So we can't talk about the trackpad size for those. It's a really expensive system, and neither of us can really justify it with our b budget. But I have used, where did I set it? I've used the, the Steam Controller. Uh, huge fan of the Steam Controller. For years, it was my favorite controller. Um, this is really, really great. It shipped with these round trackpads. And then when the Steam Deck came out, they switched to these square track pads and these square track pads a lot of people were wondering why are they square and uh last episode we were talking about it and valve said the reason that they're square is because it gives you a little more surface area where your thumb can reach now ethan makes a really good point in that th when you're making a controller this whoops i just dropped the back panel off this is so <laughs> much smaller than this and hmm. so you don't have as much real estate to work with so why not make the track pads a little bit smaller if people aren't using that much of the trackpad and while ethan makes is making a good point that outer edge that's not used as much doesn't mean that it's never used i know that he said rarely used but you probably are using that more than you think and getting ri making the trackpad smaller means that you're going to have to do that thing that we used to have to do uh, on early laptops with a very, very tiny trackpad where you move your finger and then move your finger and then move your finger. Or uh -huh. back in the days of the roller mouse where we would have to uh, pick up the mouse, we get to the edge of the the the. the uh, mouse pad and then pick up the mouse put it on the other side and, and do that a bunch of times you would have to do that a lot more and that would be very sure. ineffective for gaming so i don't know if they can make them any smaller lloyd what do yeah. you think do you think that they could make it smaller in order to fit all of all of this stuff on something this size yeah, like I, I, if they want to keep the exact same width as the Steam Controller 1 for Steam Controller 2, there's going to be some issues because of all the just the, the sheer amount of buttons that are on this thing. Um, as, as far as the trackpad size, I, I think it's pretty much perfect. It's a, really the size of like your standard D-pad on like a Super Nintendo controller, which is a super comfortable, comfortable way to to play. Um, you, your thumb doesn't have to move very far to get to all the edges it can get to the corners very easily. Um, I, I think the, the trackpad size on the Steam Deck, uh, I don't see any issues with it personally. I, I like it. Actually, that's a lie. I do see one issue with it. When I play my Steam Deck in the middle uh, of the night uh, or when it's dark, I can't find the Steam button because the trackpad's too big. Um, it really isn't. <laughs> it's just if they made the if they made the the um, printing on that Steam button glow in the dark or have have a, a light behind it, I'd have no problems with the uh, with the trackpad size. Because without fail, I'll take my finger off the the analog stick and I'll go to hit the steam button and I hit the bottom corner of the uh, trackpad, which then, depending on the game, will do things um, that I maybe don't want to do when I just want to hit the steam button. Um, but yeah, as far as this device or a possible steam controller too, I, I really think they nailed it. Um, something that is just like, an inch and a half square. Uh, I think that's the perfect size um, for for man hands. Maybe if you're if you're like a smaller child, um, maybe it's a little bit too big. But um, I, I think for the vast majority of people, uh, I think it's a great size. Yeah, and I I don't think that Ethan is saying that it's too big. I think that they're just saying it's like they're trying to solve the problem that we're all talking about. How can you fit all of these things into a controller size thing? And I yeah. I think that. As much as I would really like to see a Steam Controller 2 that had all of the things, I don't know if you could. So I'm going to ask a question to all of you, and you can, if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, leave a comment, or if you are um, listening to this on the podcast, send in a submission through nerdnest.tv slash submit. What would you remove from a Steam Controller version 2 in order to make it small enough and for me i like i'm just going to start with me though i would only move, remove one thing and that would be the left trackpad the left trackpad i i use very very seldomly when i do use it i use it as a radial menu and honestly i don't need to use it as a radial menu because i could do uh, button cords in order to activate my left joystick as a radial menu instead. Uh, so I could do that. I could accomplish the same thing with action layers. 
The right trackpad, however, is very, very important to me because it allows you to control the camera in, say, a first-person shooter game or a third-person shooter game that is not meant for a, 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 a traditional controller. So that's what I would remove. Uh, Lloyd, is, is there anything that you think that you could do without on the Steam Controller version 2? I do agree that the left tr the left um, trackpad is almost useless for me. Like I rarely, rarely, rarely ever use it. Uh, I'm looking at like my various controllers that I have, and like if you have sort of like the offset sticks of an Xbox controller and the width of the Stadia controller, uh, if you put the the right analog stick up where these buttons are, which aren't needed, you have some space here for a trackpad. And if the if you if you play with like the the width and height and stuff. You could probably get almost a full, a full trackpad where this analog stick is. Um, I, I think it could work. Like I, I really think they could put everything that is in this device, minus the the left trackpad, in an actual controller and have it be comfortable and usable. Um, I'd love to see uh, a wall of three D printed prototypes uh, in a couple <laughs> years when Valve finally releases one, uh, because. I, I do love the the feel of the Stadia controller, and I know a lot of people don't like the offset sticks. But when you're when you're getting to the point of um, trying to find space in in a in a device like this, the sticks are definitely taking the most room because of the huge module that goes underneath uh, the plastic here. So trying to find like Lego, uh, the, all the the controller Lego pieces to snap together, I, I think something the size and a little bit wider um, than like the Xbox controller, like the Stadia controller would be a form factor that would perfectly work. You have space on the back for the uh, for, for the belly buttons, uh, as we talked about last week. Uh, I think it could really work with just the removal of the left trackpad, but it's going to be tight, and it's definitely going to take some, uh, some engineering to make it feel and perform well. Um, but I would love to see it. Like, I would love a Steam controller, too, because I love my Steam Deck so much that I go to any other controller, and it's like, Oh, I, I can't I, I can't just reprogram these things. I can't just <laughs> use a trackpad. I can't do this. I can't I, I, I'm I'm loving my Steam Deck too much. I think it's ruining me for other consoles. Yeah, and there's gonna be people who like they hear us talk about this and they're like, well, you know, the PS5 controller has that trackpad, but that trackpad's like in the middle of the controller and yeah. it it's cool. Like I was playing uh, Ghost of Sh Tsushima and uh one of the things that you do is that it's a very, very minimalistic UI for that game. And if you want to know which way to go, you uh, swipe up on that trackpad and the wind will blow and you can like see which way the wind is blowing and that, that tells you the direction that you're supposed to be going, which is a really cool way of doing it. But that trackpad is so far to the middle that I just don't see myself being able to use it for anything like... I can't imagine playing a first-person shooter with my thumb on that trackpad. That just is crazy to me. There's no way that it would work. Yeah, like the the PS5 controllers, the similar width to the Stadia one. So yeah, if you somehow made it a little bit wider and moved this stick up just a tiny bit to do offset sticks, and then you could put the thing down here, I think it would work. Uh, just having the trackpad up here is, I don't know, I don't like it personally, but maybe usability experts say that is the, the definite way to go. I could see that working as well. Like they could fit, they can even put two trackpads at the top if they want to <laughs> steal this form factor, right? Um, but yeah, I think having the left one gone is kind of a no-brainer. Um, keep the D-pad because having physical buttons for a lot of games is is a very good thing. Even though they have like the the tactic feed, the tactile feedback when you push on the edge of the of the trackpad, they have all mm -hmm. those haptics in there. I still personally prefer physical buttons for a D-pad. Um, but yeah, like there's there's definitely enough real estate on a handheld controller. Um, to put all that stuff in it. And I would love to see it. I really, really hope Valve works on one of these guys. Awesome. Let's move on to our second submission. This one comes to us from Captain Gid. They said, Spider-Man Remastered looks pretty sweet, but Steam has spoiled me from the thought of paying full price for brand new AAA games. Anything over $25 seems crazy to me. Since I mostly grab old, well-regarded indies on sale, I wonder how long it typically takes for AAA to drop this low. God of War fell as low as $40, I think, recently on Fanatical or a Steam sale or something like that. Elden Ring hasn't really dropped much. Anyone have any predictions? Uh, so, Lloyd, I, boy, you and I 
come from a console world. We're, we both played games on PC for years and years and years, but we both right. mostly play console. Right. It's only recently, especially for me, that I would go back into playing PC games. And since since we started this this podcast and we started talking about PC gaming more often, uh, there's a thing that Lloyd and I are saying to each other all the time is, oh my God, there's so many sales all the time. And then stick around to the end of the show. There's a really good sale that you're going to want to hear about. Um, but you can't really answer your question, Captain Git, because it depends on the publisher. Each publisher does their own thing. You look at Ubisoft, Ubisoft games are constantly on sale. Like, yeah. I don't know that they're ever full price. I don't think Ubisoft understands what full price is. Um, do you, what, what do you think, Lloyd? What, do you think yeah. we can expect Spider-Man uh, remastered to be on sale anytime soon? Definitely. Like, there's 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 a couple scales in the game industry. There's the Nintendo <laughs> side of things, which is $80 <laughs> forever. Uh, well, Canadian, $70, I guess, U.S. prices forever. Um, and then there's Ubisoft, which is like, oh, this game's been out for a month. You can buy it for 10 bucks. There you go. <laughs> um, and then there's also the time of year sales, like around Black Friday or like Boxing Day up here in Canada. Um, things really drop in price. Um, I picked up Horizon Zero Dawn on on Steam for 20 bucks. And it was only on Steam for uh, maybe a year, I want to say. Maybe, maybe just a little bit longer than that. And it was already down um, like below half price. Um, so yeah, Spider-Man will definitely drop in price. Um, they've already announced that the Miles Morales, um, uh, add on sequel, whatever you want to call it, um, is going to be coming to PC. I have no doubt that when Miles Morales drops on PC, you'll be able to get the original, um, the, uh, Spider-Man on steam for around that price, $20 or whatever. I, that seems to be, um, the point where I buy games. So when they drop to that price, I'll just, I'll pick them up. And it's happened for most of the games that I've put on my wish list. Other games like Elden Ring, as you said, Bill, uh, I haven't seen too many sales. Uh, but then another game that you don't see a lot of sales in the console space, um, uh, Monster Hunter, has been on sale constantly on Steam. So I think, it, as you said, Bill, it really, really depends on the developer or publisher. Um, but Sony, being the publisher for the Steam games, they're dropping prices. You can get Horizon on sale. God of War is on sale. I have no doubt that Spider-Man will continue in that vein. Uh, it just might take a little bit because it's kind of the new hotness right now. That's There's a lot of people talking about it. So Sony's going to gonna scrape as many pennies out of um, of the coffers as they can before they start dropping prices. Now, you, have, you, you don't have a PS5. I have a PS5, so I'm probably going to play Spider-Man on that. Uh, you don't have a PS5. Did you pick up Spider-Man for, for uh, Steam yet? No, I played it full on PS4. Oh, so okay, I've already played perfect. and beat the game. I do want to play it on my PC. Uh, so I probably wouldn't be picking it up for my Steam Deck. But when it drops in price, I want to see what it looks like running in 4K, 60 frames, HDR, uh, ray tracing, all that fun stuff. I, I don't think I can do 4K, 60 on my rig. My It's a fast system, but it's not that fast. I'm also looking at an ultra wide monitor. I want to really get a, a like an ultra wide um, 4K ultra wide monitor, and I want to see what it looks like on that. So I'm sure in the near future, uh, probably long future, um, <laughs> I will be picking it up, but mainly just to play it on my PC to see how well it or how good it looks and how well it plays. Uh, because I'm a huge fan of that game. I, I'm I'm the like Spider Man's my favorite superhero. I've loved every Spider Man game, whether it's a good one, uh, <laughs> like objectively good or objectively bad. I've I've enjoyed all of them. Um, so I will play this down the road, but yeah, it, it won't be at full price because I already own it on my PlayStation. I did see an awesome tweet. Uh, I don't know who it was, and I didn't like capture it to to talk about it on the show. But somebody had was playing Spider Man on their Steam Deck. They're swinging along. They get to a location, and then they put their Steam Deck oh, down. Yeah. And they were oh, yeah. in that location, and I thought that was so really good. cool. So, so cool. And it just shows how well they did it capturing kind of Manhattan mm -hmm. in this game. Like, I, I've only been downtown Manhattan a, a few times, walking around and, and seeing the, the tourist traps and, and eating really good food, of course. And uh, I always love flying through Manhattan on a wing, on a, on a web swing because it's like, oh, yeah, I've been there. Oh, yeah, that looks exactly <laughs> like what it looked like when I was there. Oh, yeah, look at all the construction. Definitely Manhattan. And uh, it's they did a really good job in Spider-Man. Where I live... Uh, would be like in uh, the first Spider-Man movie when uh, not uh, the first one with 
the new guy, uh, not Andrew Garfield. What's his name? Uh, I'm blanking. Um, why do you do? Why do you do Sunday mornings? Ask me. For <laughs> I don't names. know. I'm anyway, it doesn't names. matter what it, it's. It, the new guy who's Spider Man in the MCU, and why he's I, go, he's yeah. awesome. Um, anyway, it'd be like in the Tom beginning. Holland. Of the, Tom Holland. Thank you. Yes, oh it'd be gosh. like in that first one where Tom Holland he gets stuck in a field. And he, has yeah. to, he, he ends up running because it's all flat where I live. There's no buildings to attach to. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it wouldn't work here. But anyway, I just thought that, that was an interesting tweet that I had seen. All right. Let's move on and talk about what we've been playing with what's on deck. Lloyd, sure. start us off. Hmm. What have you been playing this week, my friend? Well, I saw saw someone talking about this on our Discord or on, on the uh, Nerdest Discord, and they were talking about a game on Steam called Project Lazarus. It's in early access right now, and it is a game very similar in vain to Vampire Survivors. It's a Ooh. auto shooter, um, but you are in a mech. Um, so I was like, you tell me more. I want to I like oh, mechs and I, and I like these auto shooters. A um, couple caveats. If you're thinking this is going to be another like 300 megabyte game that you can quickly download, it's not. It's like four and a half gigs because it is a full 3D rendered world. Um, it, it runs decently on Steam Deck. Uh, the text, the font um, rather, is so, so small. Um, so hopefully the developers take that into account and come out with a kind of like big text mode. Uh, it, the funny thing is there's actually a... Uh, a large resolution mode, so it makes the text a little bit bigger if you're playing in 4K, um, but it doesn't when you're playing like in 720p or mm. whatever. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's it's an early access game, and it plays wonderfully. And essentially, it's the exact same as Vampire Survivors. Your your mech auto fires. You move around with the left analog stick, and you aim with the right analog stick, and you pick up little gems, uh, which then give you upgrades, and you have specific. Um, loadout slots on your mech depending on the mech that you pick so you might have more weapons on your arms or you might have the ability to have more things that um, increase like your speed or strength or toughness um, and then on top of that as you play through the game you unlock new mechs and the mechs that I've unlocked they all control completely different so the oh, first nice. one the first one is vampire survivors. You move around, you you aim, that's it. You don't you don't hit enemies because they take damage or they give you damage. Uh, the next mech that you unlock, you will have tank treads and it perform or it it plays like a tank. So you move forward uh, to go forward. If you hold left or right, you're 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 just rotating in place and then you have to hold forward again. So then you get into a place where it's like, oh my God, am I, if I hit forward, am I actually going to go uh, up on the screen or am I going to go down on the screen? And then it gets really crazy. But that mech has the ability where if you run over enemies, you regain um, some of your uh, armor back. Uh, not all enemies can be run run over, of course. Uh, only like the little little wormy, slimy things that uh, crunch underfoot. Uh, you can <laughs> run over those, and they'll give you some of your um, armor back. So it's it's really interesting, kind of where they're taking sort of what Vampire Survivors does. And I know Vampire Survivors isn't the first one, but it's it's really the one that um, like gained my recognition as this is fun. And then the internet kind of blew up over it. Yeah. It, it takes that formula and twists it enough. Um, the fact that each mech is different um, and not just start with different weapons, like in vampire survivor, they actually control differently. It looks like there's just oodles of content to unlock. Um, it, it looks and plays really, really well, even on the steam deck. Uh, it does get your battery running pretty hot uh, unless you turn your graphical stuff all the way down <clears throat> or put a frame rate limiter on it. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying project Lazarus and it's three bucks. Yeah. It's an early access game for $3, go buy it. Um, and hopefully the developer will get enough people doing that and then they can continue to iterate and make the game perform, uh, better than it already does. But, uh, for, uh, an early access game that was just dropped, I'm really, really enjoying project Lazarus. Now, as I'm watching the video, I see like UI elements where on the left, it shows hit points on the right. It shows uh, like mana or something like energy. It's your very, armor. very. Oh, that's your armor. Okay, that yeah. makes sense because I was like, boy, it's odd that if it's an auto shooter where mm -hmm. it's just shooting all the time, you don't have to actually do that. It's weird that they would have a resource for you to manage, but there's no resource. You just move around, right? Yeah, the only resource is the gems you pick up, which work as experience for leveling up. Awesome, man. This I already added it to my wish list while you're talking about it. That game. That game looks really, really cool. I'm I'm impressed. Uh, that, it's very good. Yeah, 
<laughs> oh man, this is gonna this is gonna suck up a bunch of my time. That game looks great. <laughs> um, Lloyd mentioned it earlier. <clears throat> Monster Hunter's on sale. My son came upstairs and he was like, "Hey, can I get Monster Hunter? It's on sale." And he waved cash at me and I said, "All right, well, we'll get you Monster Hunter." Uh, so I played a little bit of that this week with him because, uh, you know, he was a new player and I was showing him the ropes. Uh, he had played Monster Hunter World a little bit, but neither of us really understood that game at the time. And so he was he noped out of it fairly quickly. This one, I think he's he's very much understanding. When we were away this weekend, he brought his Steam Deck. And actually, I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, <laughs> so we left. And he was like, oh, monster!" like we were down the road. And he's like, Monster Hunter didn't download. And my my wife was like, I, we were getting gas or something. I can't remember. He goes, Monster Hunter didn't download because he had shut the screen off. He forgot. Valve, please, please let us set it so that it downloads with our screen off. So that if we're downloading and we hit the power button, it just, it asks. Do you want to keep downloading and just save battery power by turning your screen off? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, so I was, we were like, okay, we're going to be in the car for many hours. And we figured it's going to take us an extra 10 minutes to download it. So we, we came back. We were like a minute down the road. Sure. I brought it upstairs. I hook, hooked it up to my Steam Deck dock um, because that has Ethernet. And we downloaded it. And then we left. We're driving down the road. And he was like, it says that I have to. The first time I have to be online, and we're like, "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" Well, luckily my wife has like wi- uh, like Wi-Fi sharing on her phone, so she was able to share her Wi-Fi connection with him, so that he could have access to the internet. So that the first time he played, the DRM would work. Valve has got to work on their offline mode stuff. Like that's very, it's not a good experience, and I saw a lot of people talking about it on um, on the subreddit. Offline is not a good experience. I don't talk about it that much because I don't take this to places where there's not internet. I'm always connected right. to the internet. So, uh, have you had any issues with offline mode at all, or or run into issues where there's no internet connection, so you can't really use your device? Yeah, a couple times. Like if I would be over over at a buddy's house, or even sometimes in the backyard, um, Wi-Fi doesn't quite stretch um, to to all areas. So I'll be like showing stuff off and it'll be like, oh, you need to get online for an, or an update is required or we need to download this thing or you need to go and accept the terms and conditions or whatever the pop ups were. Uh, it's only happened a handful of times because like you, Bill, I play my Steam Deck in my house uh, and then maybe uh, the odd time I'll take it, um, take it out like to work or whatever. But it's mainly something that has been staying inside my house. I have Wi-Fi wherever I go because I can share my hotspot on my phone. Um, so it's really never been an issue, but yeah, I could see where, where that's a thing. Like I've seen number, a number of Twitter posts where it's like, yeah, I got my steam deck loaded up with games, got on the plane and realized that I can't play any of them, or I can only play this one or whatever, whatever the messages are. So yeah, they, they do need to do a little bit of work, but it's kind of hard, hard for them to do that because it's, it's not like there's an OS that is running, um, for every steam game where they, the developers have to, um, they have to conform to whatever the the rules are for the os because it's it's there's no s it's a it's a pc platform so it's going to be tough for valve to enforce this but what you said earlier about um if you go to shut off your screen and and downloads are are happening it's like if they popped up a thing saying you're currently downloading that will complete in 25 minutes do you want us just to turn off the screen that would be such a lifesaver for me i i realized um lately if I go to start a game and there's already a game running, it actually pops up a warning now saying there's already this game running. Do you want to start this game? Do you want to cancel this game? Or do you want to do you want to stop the original game? Or do you want to have them both running? Please note, running two games is going to have performance issues. And that didn't happen in the first uh, week when I had it because I remember um, playing Vampire Survivors and my battery life was like five minutes. And I'm like, what is <laughs> happening here? Oh yeah, I had, I had another game running in the background. So yeah, little little tweaks like that would be huge. And and you know, Valve is working on this thing like constantly. So I have no doubt that that's going to be a thing. What I would really like to see is they update their verified, playable, all that stuff to add. I, I know that there's like they'll they'll have like has third party DRM, but I think verified needs to work with offline mode without ever having to turn anything on. 
I think that that needs to, because that's a very verified, if you ask me, and nobody is, but if you ask me, it is a, it's, it should be a very console-like experience where you buy the game, you play it, there are no issues. Whereas, like, if I have a Nintendo Switch, I buy a game, I can play it, there are no issues. If I, it, it, obviously, that doesn't work for a game like Fortnite or whatever, where, you know, you are online, it is an online game. But for right. a single-player game, you should not run into this issue in a verified game. And I almost wonder if another... I, I, I struggle to say they should add another category because you add a category for each c- case that comes up, then suddenly you've got 400 categories and that's a mess. But they need to do something, something to make it a little bit easier so that when you are playing a game or going to play a game, you don't run into these speed bumps because that's a negative experience. And then people associate that negative experience with the hardware, not... Right with the the publisher that decided to have an extra launcher that was uh that got in your way and stopped you from playing the game because of their third party DRM nonsense. Right. Yep. All right. Uh you've also been playing Arcade Paradise. I saw uh somebody tweet about this and I clicked on it yeah. and I saw the video and I said Oh no, this looks terrible. I love the idea oh. behind it. The idea is you run an arcade, but when I saw the ad for it, I was like, this looks irritating. Am no, I wrong? You, you're, you're so very wrong. Bill. Really? So Ar- Arcade Paradise is a love letter to kind of like 90s arcades. And what the game is, uh, you, you're, you're halfway through business school and you are then tasked with running the family business, which is a laundromat. Uh, your your dad or dad or or mom I can't I think it's your dad gives you the keys and you're you're tasked with bringing it back from the brink of closure. Um, so when you walk when you first start the game you are walking into uh, your laundromat and it is a laundromat and everything in this game is a mini game. But before we get into what the game is, I, I just got to talk about um, the game performance a little bit. At launch, um, this game has some issues on Steam Deck where the UI elements uh, partially display off the top screen and off the bottom screen. So you can't see all of the text when it pops up a, oh, your thing has to, to, you have to finish the thing that you were doing. You can't fully read it. And some of the things that pop up the top are off uh, the screen. So uh, posted about it on the the developers um, Discord and they're like, yep, we're, we know that this is an issue. We're working on a patch. So I hope that within a week or two, this that will be fixed on Steam Deck. Um, anyway, now back to the game. So when you first start the game, you're, you're tasked with saving the laundromat. And everything in this game is a mini game. So one of the first things you have to do is put laundry into a, a laundry machine. So you have to walk up to a laundry basket, hit X, walk over to the machine, hit X, and then little animation happens. You have to hold down the X button or A button or whatever it is. Um, and it's like, okay, that's kind of weird. And they're like, oh, everybody in here is is just a mess. Can you clean up after them? So you have to go around this laundromat and pick up garbage. And as you do pick up garbage, a little icon, like a video gamey icon on the side of the screen fills up as the garbage bag is filling up. And then when it's completely full, it's like, now take it to the trash. So you go out of your laundromat, walk to the back, and then there's a dumpster. Then you hit X or A or whatever it is on the dumpster, and then a target forms on the dumpster, and then this little meter keeps going up and down, and you have to like throw it in at the best possible time uh, to get an S rank on throwing the garbage away. And obviously that doesn't matter, <laughs> but it's just it's it's kind of showing you how the rest of the game is going to play. Um, when you're cleaning up other garbage, there might be gum on something. So you have to keep pulling at the the wad of gum to pull it off. So you have to keep pulling pulling at it when the the gauge is all all the way at the top. So they've gamified everything. Um, and then after you do your your initial kind of laundry thing, it's like, oh, you found a key to the back room. And then when you go into the back room, there's an arcade cabinet and your office. And then the game really, really opens up. So um, basically what this game is at, at its like top down level is a resource management or time management game. So you're doing things uh, with a, with a set amount of time to get money or you're putting resources into your business to generate more money. So as you get more money from doing laundry, you can eventually start affording to buy your own arcade machines. And in in the in the game, the buying thing, you're on like an old 90s computer with like spinning animated GIFs and, and all the stuff like it, it is. 
it, this this is like right out of the 90s. I completely love it. Um, and then you buy the actual machines. And when you get the machines, you can you can change the machines. You can edit the difficulty. You can make it cheaper. You can make it more expensive. Uh, you have to repair the machines by physically pulling out the boards and flicking off bugs and and, and things <laughs> like that. So everything about this game is gamified. Uh, so it's a it's a game of games essentially. And um, wh when you're building up your arcade over time, I haven't gotten that far in this game, mind you. There's 35 real arcade machines. Well, not real as in their old arcade machines that existed before, but ones that were made specifically for this game. So you can play this game just like a, a management sim. How do I make the best arcade that makes the most money and allows me to expand the fastest? Or you can say, I really like this game. I don't care about the rest of the game. I'm just going to go here and actually play this arcade cabinet. And you can play every single arcade cabinet that is in the game with 35 retro games, which are just kind of um, takes on popular arcade games from like the 90s and, and early 2000s. Um, but done in like this really amazing pixel art style, if they're an older game or uh, rudimentary 3D graphics or vector graphics or all this other stuff that is happening. There's like foosball tables. There's other stuff as well. It is not exactly what you think it is when you first look at it, but then you, you understand that it is kind of like a management sim for video games and you could play the video games. It's kind of like what I wanted when I was a kid, when, when, uh, when I was playing video games, I'm like, I want a game that has video games inside of it, um, which is why like the original animal crossing where you could unlock NES games, was right. just like, I'm like my head exploded. It was like, this is exactly what I wanted. Well, no, arcade or Shenmue. paradise is it. Or Shenmue, exactly. <laughs> uh, Arcade Par Paradise is exactly what I wanted. So I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I'm playing on PC, unfortunately, because the UI bug on the Steam Deck is annoying. Hopefully they patch that super, super fast. Um, but yeah, man, this you, you're going to love this game, Bill. I know Bill. This is a Bill game. The the retro aesthetics, the old video gamey things, the resource management stuff, but not done in an annoying way. Uh, I think you'd really, really like this game. So yeah, Arcade Paradise. Pretty fantastic. Well, while he was talking, I went over and clicked on on wish or add to wish list. So <laughs> it is now on my wish list. I will definitely check it out. It is currently at ten percent off at seventeen ninety nine US, uh, or you can get the digital deluxe version for twenty two bucks, which is twenty five percent off. Uh, if yeah. you like me throwing a bunch of numbers at you, <laughs> all right. Uh, I didn't play much else this week other than Monster Hunter. I've been playing a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima on my PS5 because my son convinced me to subscribe to their their thing, and we were playing that together. I won't talk about that on this show. I'll talk about that on a ne next episode of Games with Bill, which will come out later on in the week. Let's move on to patch notes. Uh, this one is pretty interesting. The SteamOS kernel, uh, which, I, listen, I understand what a kernel is. I understand it's like that CMOS is just Linux with a skin on it, essentially. Um, and they are currently working on possibly moving from 5.13 to 5.19 uh, for their the base for their kernel. This comes to us from Luke Short Cloud on Twitter. They said... Valve is currently working on rebasing their Linux kernel from 5.13 to 5.19. They were even testing 5.17 at one point. I discovered this last night while I was updating my Linux SteamOS and Mesa SteamOS packages on the AUR. And then they give you a, a link you can click on, which just takes you to like a bunch of stuff that I, I would not mess with myself. That being said... I thought that this was really interesting. So I asked our community, I said, Linux nerds, I need help. Tell me what this means. And uh, Luca, who is a community member in our, in our Discord, they said this. The kernel, and this part I already knew, but uh, there's a lot of people who won't know this. The kernel is where the operating system has low-level access to the hardware. It's like a step below drivers. And this means a few things. Valve is really embracing the fast progress rates of Linux, meaning that they're moving from five point, I may get the numbers wrong, but from 5.13 to 5.19, uh, skipping some stuff. They're actively looking for those low level updates to make SteamOS the best OS that could be. And for users directly, that's me, uh, it means we get some of the latest and greatest improvements of the part in the OS that all Linux distributions share really fast if Valve releases that update soon. Uh, Lloyd, yeah. 
what do you think about this? I, I think it's great. Um, well, I don't know the specific benefits going from 5.13 to 5.19. I, I stopped looking at the Linux kernel back when like it took 36 hours to recompile it uh, back on 4.86. <laughs> That's when I was really worrying about the Linux kernel uh, way back in the day. Um, the, for me, the one thing that this is going to add is um, there's a lot of components in in a Unix system that um, are kind of like low level drivers or um, or uh, utility applications that kind of run in the background. And certain applications you want to install will have prerequisites. So you need this library version blah, and you need this library version blah. Some of the libraries that are um, on Steam Deck unfortunately can't be upgraded to newer versions because they require newer Linux kernels. So that means that once the the Steam OS base goes from 5.13 to 5.19, those packages won't have those limitations anymore. So potentially we'll get more features, we'll get more um, security, more stability, um, maybe even some more speed, depending on what exactly is going to be touched by these um, independent things that um, that can't be currently updated on Linux. So that to me, that's the exciting part is it, it, this is newer to what the active development is going on. So that means that bleeding edge things and 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 software fixes and, and all that stuff will have been they've gone through multiple iterations to get to where we are now. So that's for me where I'm excited, not knowing any of the specifics for what benefits uh, 5.19 will be over 5.13, uh, but upgrading the, the, the core of your OS essentially um, is always a good thing from a security standpoint because there's always security issues on Linux that are being patched out. Yeah. All right, let's move on and talk about real quick, just a, a PSA. If you were running into the micro starter that was introduced with 3.3, make sure that you are on the latest SteamOS beta update. They say that they are <clears throat> that they are that they have fixed the issue now. Uh, and then there was some people talking about that there was an issue with Red Dead Redemption 2. No, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. Apparently that's been fixed. And somebody was talking about Forza was was running into an issue, and they put out a specific patch just for Forza as well. So Valve has been hard at work updating their system. Love it. Love to see it. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about the news. Um, Valve is hiring uh, for supply chain stuff. Uh, this is really interesting. Last week, they were supply, uh, hiring somebody for, for supply chain logistics. This week, they're hiring from somebody for supply chain program management. What this says to me is that as much as they've increased the production of the Steam Deck, we're going to be seeing even faster rates come out. I should have grabbed a graph, but somebody had has people have been posting this graph of like the estimator for like when you would get your deck. And that curve is starting to look like a hockey stick where it's just shooting yep. way up. Look at that hockey Lloyd. You like hockey. Um, I do like hockey. <laughs> so it's that graph is turning into a hockey stick where the rate at which people are being able to purchase their Steam Decks is increasing really, really quickly. And if they are doing supply chain stuff, uh, that means that they're finding those points where they're slowing down and speeding everything up by doing that. It's not just about how fast can you make them. It's also how fast can you get the parts? How fast can you ship them? How fast can you get them through customs? How fast can you do all of these other things that most of us don't really think about? Valve has exactly. to think about. And so they are hiring people to speed that up. Any thoughts on that? Uh, it's great. Like if you like, I don't know if Valve is maintaining like outside warehouses for core components that they need for some of the stuff. So you you'd have these rare elements uh, and then you minerals and things and you'd have battery stuff and you would have all this stuff. If they if they can create, um, I don't know, a, a network of warehousing. Um, they can start um, producing these things in multiple places down the road. So maybe this is what this is um, leading towards as well, which would be great. Or it could just be Valve is looking at expanding. They're already expanding um, into Japan and other places. Maybe they're looking at more expansions. So they want to have someone um, to, to help them with the logistics of, okay, we need to move stuff from this part of the world to this part of the world. Um, what kind of weird limitations do we have? What type of weird... Um, I, I don't know, uh, crossing border issues are we going to have going here, going there? Um, the fact that they're ramping this up um, just has me very excited that they're going to start 
boosting production even more. Um, as you were saying, those graphs from the estimator, I think it was Zap in the in the chat uh, or in the Discord rather. Mm-hmm. He, he's he's gone up like forty percent of over the last week, and that he expects to get his email on Monday. Where when you looked like two weeks ago, he was at like twenty three percent of the way to getting his Steam Deck. So things are really ramping up and. Um, having some more people involved with that is going to be a good thing um, just to make sure that this is a um, a smooth experience for everybody um, all, all over the world once uh, Valve starts shipping these things out to Japan and other parts of the country or other parts of the planet, rather. Yeah, and if you want to be involved in that, you better make sure that you have at least one year experience using QuickBooks, which I thought was <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a weird ask. But okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Moving on to the next piece of uh, of information, uh, that is, people have been complaining about this for a really, really long time. A really long time, ever since it turned out that Valve went with FedEx, and that Valve was shipping the Steam Deck in a not so inconspicuous box. Right. People have been having their Steam Decks stolen off of their front porch or the FedEx driver is pretending to deliver it and not delivering it. Like all these kind of things happen. This always happens when you have a very hard to get item. Uh, Valve definitely, definitely, definitely should have been shipping these things in boxes that were more inconspicuous. That being said, what are they doing about this? Well, this came up on the uh, subreddit from uh, Kamauri, Uh, They said, what is Valve doing about stolen Steam decks? I found this on Facebook user and I I, I found this on Facebook. User bought it from Facebook Marketplace, which I use Facebook Marketplace. I just sold my PS4 on Facebook Marketplace because I don't use it anymore. Um, But here's this this thing right here. It says a ticket was created on your behalf by Steam support. Um, Hello, the Steam Deck being used on this account has been reported stolen. Can you please let us know how you obtained it? If you purchased it online, can you let us know what platform it was listed on eBay, Facebook, Marketplace, etc.? Thanks for using Steam. Thor, son of Odin. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's that's how you scare people. You have a god <laughs> working for you that is going to smite people if they don't tell them where they got those stolen Steam Decks from. I can only imagine wow. Korg is sitting there playing Fortnite <laughs> And sitting next to him is Fat Thor typing away messages uh, to Steam support as, you know, he's got to make the bucks somehow. He had to <laughs> he has to fund his beer and, and hamburger uh, habit. So, yeah, that, that totally works. For the this audio listeners, this is signed by Thor, which is just, I mean, I'm sure that's the person's actual name. But as a bunch of Marvel nerds, like, of course, that's what we think of. Anyway, Lloyd, what were you about so, to say? This is a great thing. Um, I know in the past, like, Companies like Nintendo would hardware lockout um, systems so you can't get online. Um, th- this is a really great way to do it. It's like, hey, by the way, you're using a stolen Steam Deck. Can you tell us where you got it from? It's not being accusational. It's not being negative. It's like, this has been reported stolen. Can you tell us how you got it? Um, that's a really great way for them to do it. Um, and hopefully this will, it, it won't discourage people from stealing Steam Decks, but hopefully this will discourage people from buying them on the third party market when you know that valve is actively researching the actual serial numbered systems that are being stolen from porches and and whatnot. Um, so this might slow down some of that third party market, which then will um, discourage other people from potentially going and stealing more to uh, just flip them quickly on Facebook marketplace. Yeah. And I have to say like, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life, but I personally would not buy a brand new device on like from a third party. I just, I hate the idea of supporting scalpers. Uh, Supporting scalpers is always bad because when you support the scalpers, what you end up doing is you are telling them, hey, this is a good business model. And so then the the scalpers, they have to find a way to make their business model even better. How do you make your business model even better? By buying more of them to make the items more rare so that you can charge more for these items that you are then making rare. And every time somebody pays a thousand dollars for a steam deck, you are encouraging this kind of behavior and making it harder for everybody else to get the devices that they want. Um, I bought my PS five secondhand. That being said, I bought it secondhand from a listener who did not upcharge me. 
they sold it to me at cost because they're awesome. And I do appreciate that. Um, but they could have, they, they could have sold it on the, the third party marketplace for a, a windfall because those things are hard to find. You can sell your steam deck for hundreds of uh, hundreds of dollars above market price because people are willing to pay that. But people right. need to stop being willing to pay for that because it hurts everybody in the end. Definitely. Yeah. Scalpers are, are terrible. And that's why a valve had to do what they did where they sell it directly because they know how big scalping uh, of a deal scalping is for consoles, for Amiibo, for uh, Lego sets, for you, you name it, anything that is collectible um, pop, pop figures, like anything that's collectible, people will buy. Like there was, um, I, I saw someone on my timeline talking about uh, this run of uh, DC comics and they were super limited edition special covers. Well, now they're all selling on eBay for like $300 where it's like, I should be able to walk into my comic shop and pick this up off the shelf. But no, all these scalpers are buying them just to immediately list them on eBay. Same thing is happening with hardware. A valve selling it this way is the is really smart, but also having this kind of, um, I don't know, this, this message where, hey, if you're going to buy a stolen one, we're, we're going to know that it's stolen and we're going to ask you where you got it from might discourage for future purchases, which to me is a great thing. And you never know. They might end up saying, uh, yeah, this was stolen. We're shutting it down. And now yeah. your device is bricked and you are out hundreds of dollars. So let the buyer beware on that stuff. I'm not going to say anything to the sellers because they're going to do whatever they want to anyway. They don't they don't care about anybody but themselves. But and I'm not saying that, like, if you bought one and then you were like, okay, this sucks. I hate it. i got to get rid of it. I'm going to sell it. That's different than the people who are stealing them off porches or buying them for the sole reason of turning around and making a profit. Correct. All right. Um, I have been irritated by this thing in yes. Steam for a very long time. And that is when there's a game that is a free-to-play game. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I might check that out. I have to install it. Like you have to install it on your computer in order to add it to your library. Well, uh, at Ro Robot Brush uh, tweeted this out. They said, oh my God, finally, not talking about Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, and then they tweeted out this picture. Play Star Wars The Old Republic, free to play. There's a green button that says play game and a blue button that says add to library. So you don't have to install the game right then. You can just add it to your library and worry about it later. And I imagine that this is a even bigger deal now that we have this little baby because it has not the most amount of storage. And <laughs> if I wanted to, like, if I'm just scrolling around in the store looking at free to play games because I'm trying to save a buck and I see a game, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's Star Wars The Old Republic, which is 58 gigs. I only have 20 gigs left. I have to uninstall a bunch of stuff. Ah, I'm not even going to bother. Or I could just hit the add to library button, and then sometime later, it's in my library, and I can play it. Lloyd, do you have a reaction to this? I think this is awesome. I love it. it that was the thing that annoyed me so much in Steam. Everything else just makes sense, and mm -hmm. this was like, why do I have to install it? And it's even worse when you do it, like if I'm on my Mac, and I want to add this to my library. It's like, well, this game isn't available on your platform. <laughs> yeah. Good. I don't care. I just want to add it to my library valve. Um, so yeah, the best part of this tweet is it's been 84 years dot gif. Cause that's exactly <laughs> the thought that I, I thought, um, yeah, so this is great. Uh, thanks Val for doing this. Just little, little niceties like this make the whole experience that much better. All right. Of the two of us, Lloyd has played Stray. I have not played Stray. This is something I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I thought it was interesting. There's a mod on Nexus mods that lets you play Stray in first person mode from the view of the cat. Is this interesting to you? I'll probably check it out. Um, I, I'm I'm dabbling with mods now more on my PC. Like I, I would really only like mod Skyrim or other games like that. But there's like the the mod for Stray where you could play as Garfield uh, just made me laugh. Um, so there's there's a lot of great mods. Playing this in first person, I, I don't know how well of an experience it's going to be, but I definitely want to check it out because uh, cats are jerks. And if I could be a jerk in first person, uh, I think it's better than being a jerk in third person. I, I think the only way that this is interesting to me is if it's if it find if they can find some way to support VR, then yes. that would be very interesting to have the view of the cat. 
But when you're playing a, a game like this, which is a puzzle platformer, essentially, not being able to see as much, like there's a reason why you play the, some games in third person and some games in first person. And I do think that Stray is probably a first per, or a third person kind of game. Um, yeah. That being said, if it were VR, then that would change my mind and I might actually pick the game up. And y you know what? It looks really good. And I can imagine, I, I just think it, I think it's cool, but it's not for me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, I could see myself more using it to just explore some of the really cool areas and and just kind of have a, a better look at some of the, 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 the architecture or the textures or, or whatever or what they showed in that Kotaku video, the start of the game when you're walking around with all the other cats, uh, that would just be a fun way to just troll my cats, just walk around, meow, <laughs> and have little cats on the screen, but without without kind of being closer to the action, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I want to do with it. I, I wouldn't want to play the whole game like that because the way it works is you have to look up to the place that you want to go. And if you're constantly making your 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 oh, yeah. from straight ahead to straight up to straight ahead, it would just be I don't know nauseating, nauseating I guess. Um, so third person would be better for that. But the uh, exploration stuff, first person, definitely going to try that out. All right, let's move on to two upcoming games that I think look really really cool. This one is Roller Drome. Uh, have you seen Roller Drome before, Lloyd? No, not 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 other than clicking through uh, today to uh, check it out on the the show notes. Uh, looks looks interesting. I think I I kind of I kind of dig this. I really like the art style for this game. If you're yeah. listening to the show, I'm it's a it's a cel shaded 1970s palette, uh, yeah. roller skating game with guns. Uh, so you get uh, you're on like <laughs> roller skates, you're uh, and not roller blades, roller skates. Which where were we? My wife and I were somewhere and we were walking along and we saw a dude on actual roller skates and we were just like, roller skates? Who uses roller skates these days? But anyway. Making a comeback. Making a comeback for are, sure. Are they? Okay. I had no yeah, idea. Maybe Roller Drone will help that. But you're on roller <laughs> skates going around this crazy uh, thing and you've got guns and there's dudes you got to shoot and you got some special moves that you can do and it almost like looks like Tony Hawk pro skater style combat or Tony Hawk pro skater style uh, gameplay mixed with a shooter, which right. uh, reminds me a little bit of wave race, which is one that's uh, about jet skis and, uh, and guns. Uh, this one, I really like the art style though. It jumps out at me. It, it definitely does. It, it like if it wasn't so cell shaded, like if they could tone down the cell shaded uh, part of it, it reminds me kind of the aesthetic of uh, an old game that I loved, Interstate 76. Uh, I love that kind of like noir style, um, like 70s, um, I don't know, kind of gritty, but trying mm -hmm. to be not gritty. It, it's it's like a weird aesthetic that came out um, in, in the 70s that you saw in a lot of movies. And there were some games that were trying to, to ape that a lot. Uh, this one looks like it could be that. Um, yet with roller skates and guns, so kind kind of completely different. But the aesthetic um, of the logo and everything just uh, yeah warms my heart. I I love that look. Yeah, and we're we're old dudes, so 1970s stuff is appealing. Uh, then there is Cursed to Golf, which is coming out on August 18th. Uh, I talked about this on the show before. Yep. This is definitely a game I want to pick up. Uh, you are a it's a 2D game. You are a golfer who gets struck by lightning in the first few minutes of the game, and then you're dead, and you are now in golf hell, and you have to find your way out of golf hell by playing through these courses. You hit the ball, uh, you have to get par, or you have to start over. It's a roguelike, uh, and that all of the levels that are procedurally generated, and so if you don't hit par you start over and the, the map has changed. In order to hit par, uh, you have to hit the ball through through things in order to get more strokes uh, in order to uh, hit par. And then you have special abilities that can stop time and stuff like that. Really, really good game. Has a really good demo that is available on Steam. And the game is coming out on August 18th. So I wanted to tell people about that because that is a game that I am hyped for. It looks really fun. Uh, thoughts on this one, Lloyd? Looks fun. Uh, from when you first um, mentioned it way, way back in the day, it's been on my wish list. So this is a game that I'm not going to pick up at launch um, or anything like that, but it's definitely on my list because it looks 
looks intriguing. I, I don't know. I like I like kind of these two D golf games that are have been popping up over the last number of years. Um, they've all been fun for for different reasons. Yeah, and you add into the idea that it's a roguelike, and that that just really makes it compelling for me. All right, let's move on and talk about deals on deck. For deals on deck, this is where things that are uh, going to be on sale. Uh, I went through and I found a couple of sales that I think that people are going to like. Number one is the Decades of Horror from Resident Evil. Uh, this is from Humble Bundle. Uh, you get $30 and you get 11 items, including Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil 2. These are the remakes, by the way. Um, Resident Evil 7, which is probably the scariest game I've ever played. Resident Evil 4, uh, Resident Evil Village. You get a coupon to get that for 50% off. Resident Evil 6, which I've heard horrible things about. Same with 5. Uh, then Resident Evil 0, Revelations 2, uh, the original Resident, e Resident Evil, and then Resident Evil Revelations. Uh, you've played a lot of Resident Evil games. Which one's hmm. your favorite, Lloyd? Um, oh, that's really tough. Um, I really liked Village. I really, really liked Village. But that has... Uh, I, I just played it, so maybe that's why it's sticking out. Um, Resident Evil 4 was kind of... Um, uh, my eye-opening experience with Resident Evil because I was playing it on my GameCube back in the day. So going and replaying that one would be nice. Um, but I bought this bundle just for the remakes of two and three because I've been wanting to play those for a very long time and just couldn't, I couldn't buy them when they were on sale other times because I had so much other stuff to play. Um, but now that I got a, a little bit more time, I can't wait to dig through these ones. So just for those alone, they play beautifully on deck from what other people in the community have been saying. Uh, so I picked up the bundle just for those ones. Um, I, I want to play through Revelations again because I remember playing through that on like my 3DS back in the day. Uh, playing a, a a better version of that uh, might be interesting. But yeah, this is a really great bundle for, what was it, like $30 to get like uh, Resident Evil 0 plus Revelations. But Re Resident Evil 0 to 7, that's pretty decent. It covers a, a huge swath. Of, of gaming time and and really celebrates this franchise that has been around for a very long time. Yeah, plus a 50% off coupon for the the newest one. So that's a I think that's a fantastic deal. I didn't jump on it because I already have Resident Evil 2 on my PlayStation. I bought it on PS4 and then I got a free upgrade on PS5. So like I would really be spending that that money on one game and I don't know that I want right. to do that because I still have Resident Evil 2 sitting on my PlayStation waiting for me to play it, and I haven't jumped in yet. Uh, all right, and then there's Blossom Tales. I don't know if you have played Blossom Tales, Lloyd. I've played it on the Nintendo Switch. This is a, I would say it's a uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past uh, homage uh, told from the, the point of view of a grandfather talking to his granddaughters about a story. And so adorably every once in a while the granddaughters interrupt the grandfather and they're like wait a second that's not what happened he's like oh yeah yeah, yeah you're right that's not what happened this is what happened <laughs> uh but it's like 19 or not 19 um super nintendo era graphics uh and gameplay i think that this one is really really good i never finished it and it's currently 75 percent off for three dollars and 74 cents um Ends August 23rd, so you got about a week to pick this up. Uh, have you played Blossom Tales, Lloyd? I did. I really enjoyed it. Uh, just like you said, the the story kind of getting rewritten uh, as the the grand the grandchildren are kind of making jokes and things. Uh, just, I, I made me laugh multiple times. Uh, really big fan of this game, and uh, for seventy five percent off, that's really a decent deal. And it looks like Blossom Tales Two: The Minotaur Prince is coming out on the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why this one is on sale because in less than a day, or I guess less than two days from when we're recording this one. Um, that one will be out and available as well. So if you haven't played the original and you love uh, kind of like, I don't know, 2D RPGs, action RPGs, uh, this is definitely one to check out. Yeah, if you are watching the video right now and you're seeing it, you're like, oh my God, that is absolutely a link to the past stuff. And it, mm -hmm. it absolutely is. So uh, I just wanted to let people know about that. And that does it for this episode of On Deck. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have yet to join the community discord, please do. Uh, if you have yet to review the show on Apple podcasts or Spotify or wherever it is that you are listening to the show, uh, please do that as well. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to, uh, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash nerd nest, 
And maybe we'll see you in the Discord as well. Lloyd, tell everybody goodbye. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another On Deck. And we'll uh, talk to you here on the next one. Have a great week, everybody.